Hi there everyone, we're in the rundown to Christmas and it's starting to get pretty cold here in Cambridge. But fortunately I found a new way to keep warm, dumping thousands of watts into my battery tester. So today we're going to be looking at six packs from GNB and seeing how they stack up against all of the five inch packs I've tested so far. It's a lot to cover in one video, I'm not going to waste any more time, let's get right into it. Before I dive into the test results, let me run you through the packs that we're going to be testing today. We've got an 1100 and a 1300 milliamp power 120C pack, and this is a LiPo, so standard voltage, maximum of 4.2 volts per cell. In the middle here, we've got an 1100 and a 1300. These are 120C, but these are high volt packs, so you charge them to 4.35 volts per cell rather than 4.2. And then finally, we have an 1100 and a 1250 milliamp power pack. These are standard LiPo packs, so maximum 4.2 volts per cell, but they are 130C rated, so a little bit higher than these. So let's see how these three different types of packs compare against each other and of course how they stack up against all the batteries that I've tested so far. Before we dive into the test results, I have a couple of big thank yous to make. The first is to Peculiar Human Biped, who sponsored half of the batteries we're going to be testing today. There's a link to his YouTube channel down in the video description. If, like Peculiar Human Biped, you would like to get some specific batteries reviewed and tested, you can reach out to me, chris at aosrc.com, and we'll get that set up. The rest of the packs were sponsored by my patrons over on Patreon, so a huge thank you to them. If you'd like to join us and support more independent scientific test work like this, looking at batteries, motors, props, and getting set up to test ESCs in the future as well, then please consider joining from just a few dollars a month, and you'll get access to a special area of my Discord server. You'll get sneak peeks of new products and projects that I'm working on, with the opportunity to give input and feedback before anyone else. And you'll also get access to the entire database of all of the raw product tests testing data that I've generated over the last two years. It really is fantastic value and it's information you just can't get anywhere else. If you think this is for you, then please check out the links down in the video description and join up today. All right, let's take a look at some test data now, starting with battery capacity. And I measure battery capacity using a representative 15C discharge from fully charged all the way down to 3.1 volts per cell when the battery is completely exhausted. And with these GNB packs, what we can see is there is not much discrepancy between the rated capacity, what the manufacturer states, and the tested capacity, what they actually delivered during my test. What we can see is that the 1100 milliamp hour 120C high volt had a little bit less capacity than rated, and the same is true of the 1300 milliamp hour 120C LiPo. What we can see is that overall, things are as we would expect for capacity, with the larger packs in general having more capacity. The only slight discrepancy is that the GMB 1250 mAh 130C pack delivered more capacity than the GNB 1300 mAh 120C pack. You are getting a bit more capacity even though the 1250 is nominally a smaller battery. While capacity is probably the metric that we're all most familiar with when talking about the size of a battery, it doesn't take into account the voltage of the pack during discharge. And this can matter particularly for comparisons between LiPo and lithium high volt packs where the voltage during discharge can be different. For that, we need to look at energy storage. And that's what this graph shows. We're looking at the energy delivered by the battery in watt hours from fully charged down to 3.1 volts per cell at a 15C discharge rate. And what we can see is that the GNB high volt 1300 milliamp hour delivers the most energy across the test. And we might expect that it's got the largest capacity and also it's a high volt pack. So it's delivering slightly more voltage. At the other end, we have a bit of a surprise, which is that the GNB high volt 1100 milliamp hour pack actually delivers less energy than the other 1100 milliamp hour packs on test, which means that it's performing significantly worse in terms of capacity and that's more than offsetting the high, high voltage that the pack has during discharge. If we're looking for the highest capacity 1100 milliamp hour pack it's very close between the 130C and 120C LiPo. Again we see that the GMB 1250 milliamp hour 130C LiPo is delivering more energy than the 1300 milliamp hour 120C. So again with these small differences in capacity of 50 milliamps or so, it can often come down more to the quality of the pack than what the manufacturer writes on the label. The final thing to consider when thinking about energy storage is the weight of the pack. It's easy to make a battery that stores loads of energy if it's really heavy, 
But what we want are batteries that are lightweight for the amount of energy that they store, that have good energy density. And that's what this chart shows. We're looking at the watt hours of energy stored per gram of battery weight. And what we can see is that the GNB packs, the high volt packs, come out significantly ahead in terms of energy density compared to the other packs. And there is a reasonable spread here. We're looking at a difference of 17.6% between the GNB high volt 1300 and the standard GNB 1100 milliamp hour LiPo. So that high volt pack is giving you more energy density. You're storing more energy per gram of battery weight. These GNB high volt packs don't just perform well compared to standard GNB LiPos, they perform well compared to all of the batteries that I've tested previously. In fact, the high volt 1300 and high volt 1100 milliamp hour packs take first and third on the leaderboard for energy density. So we've talked about energy storage and energy density, and that's gonna be important for you if you're looking to pick a battery to fly for a long period of time. But what about if you're more interested in getting the most power out of the pack in a short period of time? Well, this is where we need to look at the burst performance. To measure burst performance, I discharge the battery from fully charged to 80% full at 15C, and that gives a chance for the battery to warm up like it would do during an actual flight. And then I hit it with the burst test, which is a ramp of 2C discharge rate per second until the battery hits 3.3 volts per cell. And that gives a really good measure of the maximum power that the battery can deliver before the voltage sags completely away. Looking at the max power chart, we can see that there is a big spread of performance. And actually we do tend to see the largest range of performance during this burst testing. We can see that the GNB 1100 milliamp hour 130C LiPo, despite having the highest C rating, actually delivers the least power during this burst test with the GNB high volt 1300 milliamp hour delivering the most power. And that's to be expected, a larger capacity pack should be able to deliver more power and a high volt pack with its higher voltage should also be able to deliver a little bit more power than an equivalent pack that's only charged to a lower voltage. The main upset here is the 130C packs not performing better than the 120C packs. So that higher rating, that higher C rating, is not converting through to better burst performance. Just the same as with energy storage, we have to take the battery weight into account. It's no good making a super powerful battery if it's also really heavy. This chart shows the power density of all of these packs. It's the power they can deliver during the burst test in watts divided by the weight of the battery in grams. And we can see that the most power dense batteries are the lithium high volt packs. Those 1100 and 1300 milliamp hour 120C lithium high volt packs are able to deliver the most power per gram of weight. And in fact, they're pretty similar in terms of power density. The 1100 delivers less power, but it also weighs less. Looking down the stack, we can see that the 130C LiPos are actually the least power dense in my testing. So that higher C rating is not converting through to better power density. The 120C packs actually deliver better power density with the 1300 doing a bit better than the 1100 milliamp power in this test. Comparing these GMB packs against all of those that I've tested previously, we can see that their performance in power density is not quite as good as what we saw in energy density. The high volt packs perform the best and they come fifth and sixth on the leaderboard with the standard LiPos falling a little bit further behind. So what is going on with these 130C rated packs? Why are they not performing better than the 120C rated packs? Well, I don't have a firm conclusive answer for you, but I am gonna share with you what I noticed during my testing. The 130C rated packs did not warm up as much during either the discharge or the burst test as the 120C packs. And initially, you might think that that's a good thing. You know, we don't want the batteries to get super hot during the test. But there is something to bear in mind here, which is that as batteries get hot, the chemical reactions that go on inside happen more quickly and more easily. And that means that the voltage sags less and they're able to deliver more power. So the nature of my burst test is really important here. We have a discharge down to 80% full, and that is giving the batteries a chance to warm up just like they would in flight. Now, if you've got a, a battery that doesn't warm up very much because it's got a very low internal resistance, the internal temperature is gonna be lower during the burst test. And that means it might not perform as well as it otherwise would. If you have a battery that gets nice and toasty during the initial discharge, 
and then you hit it with the burst, it's nice and warm and it's able to perform better during the burst testing. So this is why it's, it's sometimes not straightforward to just say that a higher C rating and lower internal resistance is better. We have to think about the nature of the test and also the nature of the use of the pack. So that's interesting to think about. And it also goes back to, you know, if you want to get the best performance out of your batteries, particularly if you're flying on a cold day, make sure the batteries are nice and warm before they go on the quad because they're going to perform a lot better. I like to keep the batteries under my coat, for example, next to my body, warm them up a little bit. Um, and that's going to make them perform better compared to if they were just left outside at 10 or 15 degrees, that's not going to do them any good in terms of how they perform when you're actually flying them. The final chart I want to show you is the voltage versus capacity plot for these batteries. Here we're looking at the voltage the battery is able to maintain during a 15C discharge from fully charged all the way down to 3.1 volts per cell, 18.6 volts. And we can immediately see that there are two groups. We have the high volt group and the normal group. And the lithium high volt packs start off at a higher voltage and they're able to maintain a higher voltage all the way to about 55% discharged. Then they actually cross over the LiPo batteries and for the last 45% of the discharge, they have a very slightly lower voltage than the standard LiPo cells. So that's really interesting to see. That high volt advantage, performance advantage, is really only there for about the first half of the pack. For the second half of the pack, the discharge is much, much more similar to a standard LiPo. Let's take a look now at the voltage on the pack at 50% discharge for all of the batteries I've tested so far. What we can see here is the GMB packs have the lowest voltage at 50% discharge compared to all of the other packs that I've tested. And this has a couple of effects. The first is more of a feel effect. The voltage will have changed more over the first half of the pack for the GMBs, particularly the high volt GMBs, than any of the other batteries. And so you might notice that the amount of throttle you need to hover um, changes more with a GMB pack than with another. The second effect is more quantifiable and it affects the burst performance of the battery somewhat. With the burst test, I'm discharging the pack down to 3.3 volts per cell. Now, how far we've got to go from the battery voltage at 15C to the battery voltage during the burst test really affects how much power the battery is able to deliver. A battery with more voltage sag, so a lower voltage during the 15C test, is going to have less headroom to deliver more power under the burst condition. So we might expect that batteries with more voltage sag would have slightly worse burst performance, and that is what we see with the burst test results as well. So these two tests kind of correlate and this is likely to be down to perhaps the chemistry of the GNB batteries. Maybe the chemistries that other manufacturers are using maintain a little bit of a higher voltage for a longer time, whereas the GNB chemistry, you see a little bit more voltage sag um, during that first half of the pack. All right, so now that we've looked at all of the test data, what conclusions can we draw from it? And we'll start by talking about the high volt packs because I think the offering is quite clear here. They have some of the best energy density of any of the packs that I've tested. They're really, really good on energy storage per gram of weight. So if you're looking to fly for a long period of time and keep the weight of the quad down, then that's gonna be a great choice. They also have quite good power delivery. So if you're focused on flying for a good amount of time, but you also want quite a bit of power and punch if you need it, then the GMB high volt packs, the 1100 and 1300, are gonna be a great choice. If we're talking about the standard GMB packs, then it's going to come down to pricing because this is more of a performance to price argument to make here. They perform acceptably well. They have decent energy density and decent power delivery. Not the best by any means, but if you can get them at a good price and they're available, then it could be a really good choice as just a, a standard LiPo to fly every day. One thing we haven't talked about is the cycle life of high volt versus standard LiPos. GNB claim 300 plus cycles for both the standard and high volt packs, but I'd love to hear from you guys down in the comments if you've noticed any difference in cycle life between a high volt pack from GNB and a standard LiPo. Thanks so much for watching. 
Don't forget to check out the links down in the video description for more information over on AOS Labs. And please consider supporting the testing either through Patreon or directly chris at aosrc.com. Thank you so much. I really appreciate any support you can offer. That's all for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.